Bricks are often made of shale, a lightweight rock that splits easily into thin layers. Quarry machines dig 40 centimeters down to expose the shale to the elements for two years. This weakens it, making it easier to process once it gets to the factory. A four-foot-high stone wheel with a steel tire grinds the shale into powder. It grinds up 50 tons of shale per hour. A screen sifts out any pieces that need more grinding. The powder goes to the pug mill, which mixes it with water. This makes a thick paste that will next go through the extrusion machine. The extruder forces the paste through a rectangular opening to form one long continuous piece called a slug. At the same time, it shaves off the crustier top layer to expose what will become the face of the brick. If this gray shale mixture is fired as is, it'll naturally produce a red brick. To engineer a different color, they coat the slug in sand mixed with an oxide mineral such as zinc or iron. Next, they texture the surface with a textured roller. This is just one of many popular designs. Then, a large knife comes down like a guillotine and slices the slug into five-foot lengths. You might be wondering where those three holes came from. Well, remember how the paste goes through the extruder to form the slug? Inside are three pins. They make three holes designed to decrease the brick's weight. Out of each five-foot length, they cut 20 three-inch bricks. The ones on the ends are uneven, so they go back into the mix to make new slugs. Next comes the delicate job of stacking these newly minted bricks-to-be. A machine first separates them. Then, using inflating bags, it grasps them, raises them, then stacks them. Meanwhile, the water in the bricks is starting to evaporate. To hasten that process, the bricks go into a dryer for two days. The dryer gets its hot air from the heat generated by the kiln, where the bricks go next for firing. The kiln is really a giant oven. It bakes the bricks at 1,040 degrees Celsius. That's almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. One and a half days later, the bricks are ready. The transfer machine takes them out of the kiln. But before they go to market, a technician does a quality check. He weighs and measures a sample to see if it meets the design specifications. Bricks are supposed to absorb some water, but not too much. Yet if they repel water completely, they'll also repel the wet mortar the masons use to stick the bricks together. So to test absorbency, the technician breaks a brick in half. He weighs it before and after, soaking it in water for 24 hours. By comparing the weights, he can see how much water the brick has absorbed. Once the batch gets the okay, they stack the bricks into cubes of five to 600. Each brick weighs five and a half pounds, so each cube weighs in at about a quarter ton. Brick is one of the sturdiest building materials around. It doesn't rot, fade, warp or dent the way some other materials can. Bricks are also energy efficient. They absorb heat to help cool your house in the summer and hold heat to help keep it warmer in the winter.